Young people, welcome back. BMB in the house, y'all. The bearded math brother coming out of Pittsburgh, California, representing the Contra Costa County and loving chapter one, lesson three, guys. No, no, chapter one, lesson six. Um, we're still in chapter one, guys, and we're loving it. You know, it really gets you ready for what's coming on later on. But it also introduces us to some new things. And this is um, something new. Uh, if you have not had the discussion about functions, welcome to the discussion. About to have a powwow, guys. So, see what we got here? Chapter one, lesson six. What is it you guys are gonna learn? To represent relations. And what else are you gonna learn? to interpret graphs of relations. So with that said, guys, students will be able to um, interpret functions. Um, I, I'm sorry, interpret relations. And those relations come from a function. Um, we're gonna be talking about, so uh, honestly, guys, the skill is identifying. Um, the reason why it's gonna be a short video is because there's not a lot of math that's gonna be going on here. But um, concept, I'm gonna say functions and relations. Skill, identify. That's it, literally, identify. So with that said, let's get this bad boy started. All right, all right. So first thing I want to do is pretty good. There it is. That's pretty fast. So you saw the handout. Our tables on there, right? Um, when we have, and I, I just have to real fast, I'm pausing. <laughs> I gonna be like, when you pause it so early. I'm pausing because X and Y. Yes, the coordinates, X and Y. Um, you see them right there, you got a table of points. Well, if you have not yet, you gotta know your vocabulary, X value, Y value, those two values can be a coordinate point. But we're talking about domain and range. We're talking about functions, right? So the relation between two values. So you can say if someone is three years old, it's 36 months. That's the relationship between years and months, right? Uh, you can even go a step further. Uh, uh, he wears a size three shoe. Uh, he's not 30 years old. Right? If he's 16 years old, if he wears a size 16, yeah, it's a big person. But there's a relationship between your age and your shoe size, right? Just like there's a relationship between a giraffe and their height, and a relationship between a shark and how many times there's a shark bite, you know, whatever. So your first value, X, and your second value, Y, forms your relationship. So when you have a table of values, that's exactly what we're talking about, the relationship between those two values. And my favorite one is, who out there working? I'm working right now, I'm working for you. So by working, the relationship is time worked, money earned. It's gonna come up in this video. Let's get it. And we're on. So as I was saying guys, or as I was pointing out, Here's that first one. Express each relation as a table, a graph, and mapping. So there's three things we're gonna do, but I only see two things because the third one we're gonna do. But for the first one, a table. Well, X and Y, negative one, negative one. One, one, two, one, and three, two. So determine the domain and range. Well, X is my domain, Y is my range. So I would just list that. But before I do that, let's go ahead and get our coordinates. So quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. How well are you in graphing coordinates? I may make a mistake. Don't you dare laugh. Don't you put it in the comments. My editor will get me enough. Don't worry. But negative one, negative one, 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 two, one, and the last one, three, two. So I express this relation as a graph. Now I'm gonna do my, can I do mapping? Yes. Now I'm listing the domain and range. So the mapping is a is a is coming up. I don't know why I didn't do it yet. But the so domain is all your x values, so it's pulled from the table, and your range is all your y values, pull that from the table, right? And of course, it looks like mapping is gonna come along a little later. Or I'm gonna put it underneath. Let's see. 
And I like the mapping, guys, because again, we're going to be talking about, here it comes. So I'm listing my domains. And don't do repeats. So if you have actually two ones in your X values, you don't have to write it twice. Just like I did for the range. No, no! See, I made a no, no, I made a boo-boo. It's boo-boo. And my editor is not gonna see it. But, there <laughs> one has relationship with one, one has relationship with one. Now that two would have a relationship with that same one. That's what I mean by you don't have to have it in there twice. Just point the two to that same one. And then three has a relationship with two. So again, you know, it can be shoe size, right? So there's no kid that's maybe one years old. <laughs> All right, so we did all three, guys. We did the table, we did the graph, we did the mapping, and then, of course, we got rid of it. So, number two, same thing. And I like it, nice and big. So, here we go. My X values, zero, Y value, four. Okay, one at a time. Next coordinate, oh, look at that. Write it, plot it. Let's do that again. Write it, negative four, negative four. Plot it. Negative four, negative four. Boom. Write it. Negative two, three. Plot it. Negative two. Oh, no, that one. Three. And last one, four, zero. Write it. Plot it. Four, zero. So there we go. Did the first two. We did the table. We did the graph. Now let's do the mapping. And what we mean by the mapping? Oh, hold on. I'm listing my domains. Zero, negative four, negative two, and four. Listing my ranges. Four, negative four, three, and zero. And in this one, guys, there are no repeats. Um, careful. Um, I made a slight mistake in the first one. But in this one, guys, your domains are zero, negative four, two, I'm sorry, negative two, and four. Now for my ranges, I have the values of four, negative four, three, and zero. And now, who has a relationship with who? Zero has a relationship with four, negative four has a relationship with negative four, negative two has a relationship with three, and four has a relationship with zero. Bam, mapping, you know, like showing it, like they show you on a map, that's what they just showed you. So, <laughs> looking good, feeling good. Number three, nothing's changing, guys. Um, three skills in the same area. Um, you're representing a relationship using the table, the relationship between X and Y. And you're using a graph to show the relationship between X and Y. So, write it, plot it. One, zero, write it, plot it. Negative two, four, write it, plot it. And our last, negative two, four, thank you. And last one, three, one, write it. And one, two, three, and up one. Plot. And again, guys, this is where I am going to list my domains, which is my X values. Now, if I didn't have the table, I'd have to look at those coordinate points. And by looking at the coordinate points, I can still pull out the X values. But it's nice to have it in the table. Or even as a coordinate, it's written up there inside your brackets. Another easy way just to look at it. Oh, here's my mapping. Oh, no. I repeated three. Catch it one of these times though. Because that is not a function. But we ain't talking about functions right now. We're just talking about relations. And it doesn't look like. So, what am I saying? Let me pause it. Pause it. The reason why is it's happened twice. It happened in the first one and it happened in number three here. You notice that in the domain mapping, the first circle right there, you've got three, one, negative two, and three. Why is three in there twice? Doesn't need to be. All right. That's it. That's all I want to say. So, so that three would have two arrows coming out of it because the three has a relationship with two different numbers, right? So three has a relationship with negative two, and three has a relationship with one. That's why on that coordinate plane, when you go to three on the x-axis, one, two, three, you see two dots. You see one up there at positive one, and you see another one down there at negative two. So three has two values that are related to it. Now let's go. All right. 
know you can't see that. Okay, I can see it now. Identify the independent and dependent variables for each relation. All right, so meaning independent and dependent. Um, a lot of people are still dependent upon someone else, especially students, right? You're dependent upon your parents until you are able to get yourself to school. You're dependent upon your parents until you can feed yourself. So one of these is dependent upon the other. So hours and paycheck. So which one is dependent upon the other? Her paycheck is based upon what? How much she's going to get paid. And that is based upon how many hours she's going to work. So the more hours she works, the more she gets paid. That means the paycheck is dependent on the hours. Now, who decides how many hours you're going to work? Well, hopefully, <laughs> the employee or the employer right, come to an agreement. But what I'm saying, guys, is really simple. Hours is independent. I can work three, I can work five, I can work 30, I can work 40. That's independent. What's not independent is the pay. The pay depends on the hours. The same thing now. Increasing the price of the item decreases the amount of people willing to buy it. So ain't nobody going to buy that for $300? I chose that. The price is independent. It can be whatever I want it to be. But the amount of people buying it, that's dependent upon the price. So independent and dependent. So hours is independent. That's, okay, good fix. Y'all saw that, right? Oh, without mistakes in this one. Caught it though. So hours is independent and the paycheck is dependent. The price is independent. And of course, willing to buy would be your dependent. And guys, that's pretty much it. Um, what's cool though, guys, is as you've been with me in these um, chapters and these lessons, um, we are going to continue to build upon the things that we're doing. So when we get to chapter 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12, that stuff will get good, right? But with all of that though, guys, functions, relations, domain, and range, um, being able to take a set of values and um, understanding that. Hey, I caught that mistake. Here it comes. So fixing what I had, and when I say fixing what I had, going back to not doing the repeats. Um, in the next video, or in the video real soon, um, you're going to recognize why it's so important that you do not do the repeats. And the reason why I don't want to do repeats is because it indicates whether or not the relation is a function. Not all relations are functions. So three has a relationship with negative two, that was the first point. One has a relationship with zero, that was the second point. Two has a relationship, negative two has a relationship with four, third point. And then the last point, I had to go back up there to three and then show that it also has a relationship with one. So that's better. That looks better. And now I can tell you it is not a function because the domain three has two ranges, negative two and one. It does not pass my double arrow test. And with that, guys, a nice short lesson. And the reason why it was so short, guys, because we were, um, I guess, identifying relations using the table, putting the values in the table, um, using a graph, plotting the points on a graph, and by mapping. So mapping probably was the newest one. And again, guys, you did nothing more than list your domains, as you can see, list your range, as you can see, and showing how those values inside are related to each other using the arrows. Guys, been a pleasure. You gotta love them when they're quick. You gotta love them when they're effective. And you gotta love the BMB. See you guys in the next video.